Action. Okay. Well, welcome again, everyone, and welcome everyone at home. I uh, just bid you all a very warm welcome here to Bally Halbert this evening as we gather together in the presence of the Lord, as we've just been singing, you know, just to be still because the Holy One is here with us. Um, I'm just going to share a wee thought with you this evening. Um, very familiar, nothing, nothing uh, really groundbreaking here, but I just thought, reading through just the, um, the prayer messages this week, and just thinking that life is going past at a million miles an hour, and nobody's here any different, you know. It's just nice to be able to be reminded, just to stop a minute, and just take in, you know, our God. It's important to do that. So we're just going to share just from uh, Psalm uh, 46, please. So if you have your Bibles with you, please turn along and follow along with me. Um, relatively short psalm. Um, and I just trust that the Lord will bless his word to each of our hearts above all else, that anything else that I might say. Um, just be encouraged and just be blessed by the reading of his blessed word. So let's just read together um, Psalm 46 then. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, Silah. There is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. The nations raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord, who has made desolations in the earth. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. And may the Lord just bless his word to us. Now, I, as I say, I just thought this was pertinent. It was really that last, um, or the penultimate verse there, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. That was just the wee, um, verse for the day on Sunday that I was reading um, when I was out in Bulgaria. You know, I just like the way it is. I just like the way that we psalm. It starts with God, him being our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And then finishing again, just as a reminder, just be still and know that I am God. And it's nearly like what happens in between, even in the psalm, is, is chaos. You know, um, mountains collapsing into the sea, the seas roaring and God ceasing wars. And, you know, what we've witnessed in recent weeks and months, you know, between COVID, between what's going on in Ukraine and the earthquakes in Turkey. And all besides that, what's going on in our own lives? You know, when that sort of brought it home to me, just the, you know, the prayers and, you know, the quests that have been um, given over the last week, you know, just thinking of, of Ivan and thinking of um, Sharon's daughter-in-law, Gillian, and, you know, Neil last week. And, you know, if we're totally honest, you know, each of us could provide a wee list of this is really getting to me. This is really, you know, just, 
I can see no end to this. If one problem stops and then another one starts and it goes on and on and on. And yet, just the wee experience I had when I was out skiing in Bulgaria this week, you know. Um, one thing I noticed I'd never noticed before, um, at the top of the, as far as you can go, to get up to the top to ski down from, just up above from that, um, I sort of noticed, which I had never noticed before, there's a cross on top of the mountain, you know, and uh, I thought, I'll have to go up and see that, you know, just, and when you went up to it, I didn't ski up to it, because it was quite a steep hill, um, so I thought I would walk up to it, which those of you who have experienced ski boots, they're not the most comfortable things to walk in, you know. Um, so after a bit of puffing and panting, because I'm not 25 anymore, 30, but anyway, um, you see, so it was a bit of an effort, but I was glad I did it, because you were on that wee bit above, even where you would have skied from the top of. Um, and whenever you're up there, because whenever you are skiing around the place, it's as fast as you can get down the, well, in my case, as slow as you can get down the hill, but you're going a direction and things are passing you by you're not really focusing on the beautiful blue skies and the and the fir trees and you know well not unless you're going to hit hit one you're not but your focus really is trying to stay upright you know and try to avoid hitting anybody else and making sure that nobody else is about to clean you out you don't really take the time to stop and just gaze around you just at the beauty that's there you know um, I was in the queue to go up on the gondola one day and somebody had written on the back of, or it was it, <coughs> something that was there on, on the back of their ski coat to say that, you know, uh, paradise isn't uh, a beach on an island, you know, and there was just a wee picture of mountains. Because it's different tastes, but for me, up on that mountain, there's something about just snow and the sky is just bright blue, not a cloud in the sky, lovely fresh white snow and the fir trees, there's just something about, it's like new, it's like crisp and it just speaks of God's glory to me, you know, um, and there at the pinnacle, and I'm sure it's been there for ages, but sometimes you just have to stop and look, it's the cross, you know, at the top of a mountain, I think it's the same down the, the mountain, the highest mountain in the Republic, isn't it? There's a cross, a big iron cross on the top of it as well. You know, and it's just a reminder, you know, that all of this, you know, it does speak of, of God's glory. You know, Psalm 19, I think it is, um, refers to it. First verse there says, The heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament shows his handiwork, you know. I mean, you just look at the size of those mountains. I mean, you just look at the beauty around. You know, even look at our own country. When you look about across the sea or across the fields and just creation itself, it's just, it's just amazing. And yet, you know, the God who made all of that, you know, loves you individually. Um... And there's nothing that's going on in your life that's a secret from God. He knows everything. He knows every thought. He knows every heartache. He knows every concern. He knows every hope that you have. You know. And this psalm reminds us, you know, that he is our refuge and he is our strength. But we do have to just pause and appreciate God for who he is. Take it in, because life is rushing by, and there's that old saying that you know the devil will often find uh, work for idle hands to do. You know, if you if you're only like me, if you think about the time probably you waste during the day, entertaining yourself, you know, or you know just doing stuff that has no real practical or purpose, you know, a time away from God, you know, it's. It's of no use, it's of no benefit, you know. But God just reminding us that he's there and he loves us. And all of the in-between verses that, you know, in this 
Sam also reminds us of his power and his might. And one day he's going to roll up the heavens and the earth. You know, even the very fact that it's all here, that he spoke it into existence, speaks of his, his power and his majesty and his holiness. And, and yet he loves me because he sent his only begotten son to take my place on Calvary's cross, where I deserve to be, not him. He didn't do anything wrong. And yet he went there willingly because he loved me. So just as we remind ourselves and we think about just those things that are on our minds tonight, you know, um, and I know sometimes we go on about it should be really good. You should come along to the prayer meeting if you can, you know. And sometimes it can be a case of, oh, it's a prayer meeting tonight, oh, you know. But it's an opportunity to come together with brothers and sisters in Christ. It's an opportunity to come together and be still. Take that time out. Because there'll be something else if you're not here that, you know, there's be, it'll be drawing you away. Maybe something will come on the TV. Maybe somebody will come to the door. And I'm not criticising you guys at home. I'm not. I know you're there for a reason. And if you're tuning in, you know, that's, that's good. That's good. But, you know, it's really good to come together. Important to come together. To, just to take that time out. To devote that particular time to God. And to think about God. And not be distracted. You know, so we can focus our time, focus our energy on praying for those things that are near and dear to all of our hearts. You know, even if we're sitting here in silence, even if we're not uttering prayers, it's a time just to be close with God. He is here. He does love you and does care for you and wants to give you that reassurance. As it says in this verse, be still and know that I am God. Not, oh, I might be God or, you know, know the privilege we have as believers to know God, to know that he isn't a fairy story. He is reality. He did create the heavens and the earth. He did send a son to save me from my sins and you. It's real and it's good to come and spend that wee bit of time together just saying thank you to God, just saying, Lord, I can leave anything before you tonight. There's nothing I'm going to leave before you don't know. But it's just so good it can come and be a part and share and to pray and to be here with you and appreciate that you love me. So that's just a few wee thoughts there tonight, which I hope will be an encouragement. I say it's nothing groundbreaking, but it's nice to be reminded. God loves you. Amen. So God bless you all. And just trust that the Lord will bless his word above all um, here this evening as just we go uh, and pray together. Thank you. Now, I'll take a wee dash through the announcements, not that I can remember. Closing prayer. Oh, closing prayer. All right, okay. I think I hadn't done this before. <laughs> right, let's just close in prayer then. Gracious God, loving Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your word. And Father, we just thank you, Father, for... Um, just the reminder that we have tonight, just to come and just to focus on you, just to be reminded that you are God. And Lord, just to take time out of our week, out of our schedules, to come, Lord, and to praise you. Come and to pray before you, Lord. Come and just share fellowship, to encourage one another. And Lord, uh, in doing so, Lord, just hopefully, Lord, just bringing glory to your holy name. Lord, we thank you, Father, for this time. And we pray, Lord, that you just bless our time together. And for those that are tuned in as well, Lord, we just pray, Lord, you would just bless and keep them as well. And, Father, that you would just... Um, I know, Lord, that you will just hear all the prayers that are uttered tonight. And, Lord, we just pray, Lord, that you would just be pleased to answer them uh, and just to bless those that are hurting, Lord, and bless those that are concerned. And, Lord, if we're coming here as well, just to give thanks, even, Lord, just for um, the beauty of your creation. And the very fact that you love us, Lord, we just pray, Lord, that you just help us to do that as well. For we ask these things in Jesus, our Saviour's name. Amen. Amen.